Hey guys, welcome. This is the Super Full Moon in Aries reading. Good for all zodiac signs. Uh, let me explain. Yes, things look a little different. Um, welcome to my home. <laughs> this area over here is where my desk normally is. Um, during Hurricane Milton, I was scheduled to receive a brand new desk because my other desk uh, had a vinyl top that the cat tore up. So I had to reschedule it to be delivered um, yesterday and it arrived and it's a beautiful lacquer uh, desk with um, tempered, it matches this coffee table. And it was uh, delivered with a nice chunk out of the lacquer. And um, in a previous life, I was an interior designer in New York City. So I know a thing or two about lacquer work and if I kept the desk, they would send a repair person. And I know that lacquer is not easily repairable. So I rejected the delivery and now I need to wait a month for a new one to be delivered. So this is gonna be our new setup here. <laughs> um, maybe until mid, to the end of November. Anyway, um, that is my living room. This is the armoire you usually see behind me. This is my lighting setup that you don't normally see. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's where I'm normally hanging out, uh, reading all your comments and um, interacting. So, this is my bar here, and that's the kitchen. I know I look a little yellow. I can't help it because all that is the glass. Remember how I always say there's a glass wall? It's all sliding doors, and you can't see the beautiful park behind me because all that sun, those sliding glass doors, the, um, uh, the uh, vertical blinds are closed, and that's how bright it is outside. Okay, and that's where Milton was going to come whoosh, blowing through because that is 100% Western exposure. So um, I can't help it. All the lighting here has a yellow cast, but what can I do? I'll have this beautiful uh, yellow golden glow to me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, do like I did when I was in... Gainesville um, evacuated for the hurricane. I'm going to pull the cards and hold them up. We're doing a little moonology work. I'll pull some oracle. I'll hold the cards up. I'll do uh, a little bit of review of this powerful super full moon in Aries. I'll tell you all about it and then I'll do the tarot spread and um, move over to the extended. Let's see what we've got. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> this is all talking about some dreams and your vision. It says your dreams need a practical plan. Step out of your comfort zone, though. We've got a little bit of North Node coming in. And then hold your vision. Okay, so we're talking about, I know this is not your normal... Um, normally, uh, a full moon is not a manifestation thing, right? That, that's for the new moon. But this is a powerful, it is going to be the biggest uh, super moon of the year, the brightest super moon, uh, closest to the earth in its appearance. And so, um, and it's Aries, which is startup energy, it's cardinal, it's fire, baby, and it's big. So lots of purging, lots of release, something coming to culmination, and then an instant sense of something new um, kind of kicking off real fast. So in a way, there's something that maybe you've already um, been dreaming up. So get something practical behind it. That's that Taurus, full moon in Taurus. Get something practical for your dream, and then you want to step out of your comfort zone just enough, right? Because the practicality will help you feel a little grounded so that you can um, allow yourself to step out of the comfort zone because you know you're anchored 
and you're holding the vision of what it is you want to see manifest as we move toward a new moon in two weeks. So that is a really lovely message for you, for all of us. This is a general reading for all zodiac signs. Um, and so it doesn't matter what you're here to watch for um, or who you're here to watch for. I am going to pull the spread. Again, I'm going to have to hold the cards up. I've been here over five years. You can trust me. <laughs> and then um, I'll go back around. I'll tell you what comes through. I'll go back around and clarify. I do read for love and relationships. So that's sort of what we're looking at. Um, before I pull this spread though, let me talk to you. I, I'm a little bit, you know, it's a new, new arrangement. So I'm a little, um, I, I got what I'm going to re review for you. I got from moon omens. I really didn't have a lot of time. It's been crazy since I got back from my evacuation. Uh, and lots has been happening around here damage cleanup, etc., etc., furniture delivery, etc., furniture being taken. Because I had to get rid of the other desk first. So I know you're probably here like, why is she talking about all of this? Because I got no one else to tell. Um, so on October 17th, so tomorrow at 7.26 a.m., that's Eastern time. Uh, we have the super full moon in the sign of Aries at 24 uh, degrees 34 minutes um, so find where 24 degrees of Aries is in your chart so you want to find the house placement um, and you want to find if you have any planets or points at 24 degrees of Aries Cancer Libra or Capricorn those are the four signs just those four that will feel this full moon more strongly and are more likely to experience significant changes in their lives. And so I'm going to give you an example. I have Saturn at 23 degrees of Capricorn, so that's one degree away, and I have Jupiter at 27 degrees of Capricorn. Both of them in my natal chart were in retrograde when I was born. So Saturn and Jupiter are so close together, and this full moon is taking place smack in between those two, right at 24 degrees. And um, those two planets in my chart fall in the sixth house of work, of service, of dedication. Okay, also of, you know, mind, body, spirit, wellness, wholeness. Okay. Um, and I've been feeling like I'm, I'm at a loss of what to do here for this channel of how to serve you, how to stay here on this platform. The channel's really been suffering. And you know, you know, I've been telling you all routinely. And I've been also telling you something needs to change. So here we are with this super full moon in Aries. Um, and this event invites us to tap into our inner strength and to transform challenges into growth opportunities. Well, hello. Kind of perfect for my situation. Would you not agree? Um, so despite it not being an eclipse, this full moon is a powerful one. And besides representing the peak of a lunar cycle with this full moon um, that began two weeks ago with the new moon solar eclipse in Libra. It also marks the culmination of a larger six month cycle that started on April 8th, back on April 8th with the new moon total solar eclipse in Aries. And I don't know if you remember that one, but that's one where we had to wear the funny glasses to protect our eyes and I was right out back there sitting in the park looking up at the total solar eclipse. So this is as I said a super full moon and it's closer to us than usual and appears bigger and brighter than a regular full moon due to the moon's proximity and increased gravitational pull on the tides these events are typically felt more intensely. And as I said, especially relevant for anyone born with natal planets or angles around the 24 
degrees of the cardinal signs of Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. So check your natal chart. As though people with planets or angles or points um, in those signs close to 24 degrees will feel it more strongly and more are more likely to experience significant changes in their lives as a chapter of their healing journey uh, likely comes to some form of completion. They have opportunities to reflect on the past months, acknowledge their growth, and free themselves from what no longer serves them. Um, now, every full moon brings our attention to two opposing and complementary signs, right? That's we have the full moon and the sun are opposite each other. This month we have uh, the Aries Libra axis um, in the spotlight. So brings our attention to how we harmonize independence, which is Aries, and freedom, um, and interdependence and connection. So that's the polarity. Um, autonomy, which is Aries, and, and, and um, togetherness, which is Libra. So those are the themes that are opposing each other, and we're looking at how to harmonize it. Um, this relationship axis, let me get this up a little bit, is what's highlighted now, and these themes have been in the spotlight for the past several weeks, especially since the new moon solar eclipse in Libra took place. And that's why I was reading... Uh, for those um, soul contracts before, so you could start during eclipse season to release some old patterns, to release some old baggage, right? To start getting prepared um, for these kinds of healing opportunities. Um, and that's where we are right now. As eclipse season draws to a close, the Aries full moon reminds us that in order to relate to other people authentically, we must know ourselves and we must be committed to honoring our own truth, our own needs, and our own desires. And this event will empower many of us to tap into the courage and strength we need to make bold decisions, set clear boundaries. That was a very big theme. Um, and walk away from situations that don't serve our highest good. Full on, flat out, full stop. So this Lunation will empower many of us to tap into the courage and strength we need to make bold decisions, to set those clear boundaries, and walk away from situations we can no longer tolerate. Uh, around this time, opportunities to heal, to break dysfunctional cycles, and re release repressed emotions will be available. And so that, my friends, is... I don't know about you, but I've been repressing a lot of stuff lately, right? Because I'm sitting here with a channel that's struggling and it's like the definition of insanity is, you know, doing the same thing over and over and again and expecting a different result. And so I'm getting the memo loud and clear. My Saturn, Jupiter wants to give me nice things and Saturn is trying to teach me lessons and this full moon is happening smack in between them, saying, girl, something's got to give. Something's got to go. This shit is not serving you anymore. So I'm trying to give you a real world example of how this can be impacting you. And even though I, it's like I'm past intention setting time, I have to do something. Aries compels us to act. So I am going to be making some changes to the channel and I'll be using a different video to inform you of that so please stay tuned because it will impact all of the individual zodiac sign readings that I do okay and therefore the memberships and all of that so please stay tuned for that video when it appears it will say something like channel update please watch <laughs> okay <laughs> So hopefully what the goal of that will be is to make a shift to kind of, you know, screw with the algorithm a little bit to beat them at their own game so that the numbers start popping up and I can go, whew, right? Beat the, if, you, if you can't join them, beat them. If you can't beat them, join them, something like that, right? I got to figure out 
it's 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 a it's a it's a computerized process. These aren't people deciding that they don't want me to be successful. It's it's an algorithm. It's a it's a computer system, <laughs> and I have to figure out a way to overcome what their what they have decided is their priority. Right? Okay. So that's the spiel for the full moon. Let's jump into tarot now. And we'll see what we get for the super full moon in Aries. Oh my, yes. The sun is shifting a little bit. Let me adjust the lighting a little bit. Ten of Wands. Yes, we've been walking with a heavy load, but this is a release card. We've been carrying something a long time. It doesn't serve us anymore. Time to let it go. Yeah, and what's crossing us here? Two of Swords. It's definitely something that it's like a crossroads moment. It's a now or never um, going within, making that important decision of the, eh, now is as good a time as any, right? At the root of the situation, the hermit, it, oh, I, and I love this card for us, right? The hermit, it's like, I've been in, in some solitary reflection. The hermit is about our introspection, our self-awareness. Um, definitely have been on this solitary journey, Long enough, I feel almost like with this Two of Swords, it's not about, um, it's almost like the decision's been made and the time is now to offload this heavy burden we've been carrying in the past justice. That's the Libra energy. Um, and it, it is about this moment of truth. Um, Nine of Swords in our conscious awareness. I'm not saying it's not fraught with some anxiety and some worry. Um, and maybe some preoccupation. Am I making the right decision? Is this really something that I'm ready to let go of? Um, not saying that it's easy because it represents change, and there it is. In the you know, in the near future, two of wands. Then we have to sort of sort through where we're headed next. The two of wands asks us, in a world of possibilities, there's our little globe there. What do, what do you want? And if we're looking at the paths before us, which path is more likely to get us there and what do we need to set in motion so that it arrives? The next card being the three of wands, ships coming in. So yes, I feel this is absolutely reflecting and it is a step out of your comfort zone here, kind of an experience that brings up, triggers all of the insecurities, the worries, the oh my God, right? And then... It is about holding the vision, that fixed moon card there, holding the vision um, will help us sort, sort out the path forward. Um, I love this. For, so the message from Spirit is Saturn, the world card. Talking about closing out cycles so we can end one cycle and have a new beginning. Lessons being learned in the hidden energies, the page of wands. And that feels almost like maybe a message coming through. Something you can't see it now, but it comes in with some optimism. It may get your in, an attention in a, in a way that kind of lights you up. And um, the outcome, right? The opportunity going forward, King of Pentacles. Yeah, someone showing up for you. But not unless or until you release this, this heaviness. There's something that's weighing you down here. And all this lightness and 
positivity and, and this energy of the King of Pentacles, which could be your person, it could be some, some, someone new coming on the path. All right? But not unless or until you, you know you're at this crossroad, you know something is weighing you down and it's just time to release it. Now, it, it could be um, a grudge. It could be ill feelings. It could be resentment. It could be a, the whole connection. It's a general reading for the collective. So you got to take it as it resonates for you. I do offer private readings, by the way. The link is in the description box below. There's our three of wands. Tower. Oh my gosh, right? Okay, so no wonder we have the Nine of Swords. And um, let me organize over here. Because what you're anticipating uh, is some communication. You're not sure when it's going to happen because it's coming from the bottom of the deck. For those who are new, welcome. Um, the cards from the bottom of the deck are what you can't see. Right, because it's either in your own unconscious awareness or it's playing out behind the scenes. Either way, you can't see it. And so, what you're anticipating is like, yeah, a tower moment. Yeah, something pretty chaotic. Um, oh, well, the minute the release, you know, the minute you have this conversation, all hell breaks loose. You're kind of anticipating uh, some drama. Okay, so uh, the hermit at the root of this. The root of this is you've done some thinking on your own. You've done some reflecting about your, you know, what you want. What you want in a relationship, in this relationship. Um, you definitely want, the, want this person or want your divine masculine um, to be either someone you can count on, someone you can have a future with. The, the King of Pentacles is the, you know, how things might unfold going forward. This is the future-facing card down the road. But right here at the root of things is you've given this a lot of thought. You've spent a lot of time um, understanding your own motivations. And so for you, this Two of Wands is about what you want from someone in your life. What you want is someone who sort of knows what they want and who, do, and who kind of takes the action uh, and shows up for you, doesn't have a hesitation about it and someone you can count on and depend upon and who wants to build a life with you. And what I'm surmising is that you do not have that at this moment. And so let's see the justice card in the past. I think you had it at one time or you had in the beginning of this connection something really lovely, really balanced, um, good times even, you manifested it. I, I, I feel that when you met, this is feeling past like when you met. And for some of you that's recent, for some of you it's forever ago. Um, justice is balance, harmony, it's Libra. Um, and I just read about that because the sun is in Libra right now and we have Gemini in the lover's card, a card of choice, chose each other of your own free will. It was beautiful. It was together, uh, togetherness, um, harmony, fun, joyful, no heaviness. You definitely feel and believe that you manifested this connection, that it was like the as above, so below of it all, right? The magician there, um, preordained, destined. Uh, I'm not seeing the wheel of fortune, but I'm feeling that energy. Um, it was perfect, hand in glove, and now it's not that. There's something heavy here. Um, it is feeling like as you reflect upon it, all this time you have spent in your solitary energy of the hermit, it's not 
headed where you thought it would be headed. So let's see the Nine of Swords. And that's why you are arriving at this point now of the crossroads energy. This is too much. It isn't going where I thought it would go. And I have to have this conversation that I know is, go is like a tripwire for something that's going to blow some shit up. Nine of Swords. Oh, wow. Yeah, in your conscious awareness here with this Nine of Swords feeling already defeated before you even begin, right? Where you thought you were headed, Queen of Pentacles, envisioning that life partnership. It's not headed there. You're aware of that. I'm feeling like you kind of maybe got a little misguided somehow is underneath is the ace of swords so there's some kind of truth that eludes you you're not seeing something clearly um or you haven't been given some truth that you really need and so all this swords energy it's right it's our it's our thoughts our perceptions our you know communication and so it's really bugging you because it's almost like um, feeling misled. Feeling misled and it's worrying you. Because this queen of pentacles, right, to the king of pentacles, um, yeah. Hold on, guys. I got to grab myself a... Um, I gotta plug it. I gotta plug it in. Okay, still rolling. Wow, um, I thought my battery would last a whole lot longer. It did not. So where was I going with this? What I was trying to say is, I really feel like you are worried because you're feeling like you were misled and you don't have all the information. That's okay, Leo, we're okay. I know, I hear the doggy barking too, right? Because on some level you thought, well, we're headed in some direction. Um, something that feels more committed, maybe. More long-term or something. But that's not where we're headed. And that's been weighing on you. And you know this conversation could bring about a permanent kind of ending. I'm not seeing ending cards, but the tower, you're anticipating a tower moment, a blow up of some kind, something that could be destructive. And so you're clearly worried about it. Let's see the two of wands in the near future. Wow, temperance, two of swords, five of cups. So as you're contemplating where you're headed next, your path forward, um, you're doing so in a way that 
I mean, honestly, coming from the higher mind, you know, with some spiritual reverence, no push, um, a little bit more self-control, restraint, almost like um, understanding, like, like notice the angel, one foot on the ground, one foot in the feelings. Uh, which is why your dreams here, the two of wands being your dreams, want, uh, your dreams need a practical plan. So the foot on the ground and, uh, you know, a holding of the vision and that sort of temperance's job is to balance it all out. And then you're going to have to sort of step out of your comfort zone a little bit with this conversation because two of swords, you, you're making a decision. And underneath is the Five of Cups. So what you can't see here is, is that it's almost as if I want to tell you, you don't want to have any regrets, but there's always a sense of loss. There's always going to be a sense of loss, right? And so you kind of have to build that in. You have to factor it in. Um, that once you make a decision for yourself, an important decision um, for the dream you've held of what your future will look like in partnership, in relationship. This full moon Aries Libra axis is about what you want out of a relationship. And if what is happening here isn't, isn't lighting you up, you have a decision to make. And you have the free will to make it but it doesn't mean that it doesn't come, you know, without a cost, you know, and some kind of looking back with some sort of regret. So let me go ahead and give you a message here from Spirit. Hanged man, Hierophant. Three of Swords underneath, interesting. So the first two cards, Hanged Man and the Hierophant landing on the world, it's almost like there's, I'm not seeing stagnation here, I'm seeing like between worlds. Okay, the ending of one cycle, but before the new cycle begins, we're in a holding pattern because something has to close itself out. And then on the other side may come some form of commitment. And what you can't see here is that three of swords. I'm not sure it's yours. You see what I'm saying? Because we, we have that energy of something playing out behind the scenes. And I don't know that this five of cups may be yours either. If you speak up for yourself, if you have a conversation despite your obvious, you know, awareness that it could be a doozy of a conversation. It could be that whoever is this King of Pentacles emperor person really gets the memo and that they have some regrets themselves and that they understand, wow, that got my attention. Right, I, like I'm feeling some heart heaviness here for maybe both of you. And that what comes of this conversation is one cycle that closes out, brings about an eye-opening moment, which can be that tower. And then we have just this sort of pause. And what happens on the other side of that is the commitment you were looking for or at least the opening salvo. And that's where I feel our little friend, the Page of Wands comes in because the Page of Wands is bringing in something positive and exciting. And it's like renewal. Um, so let's see what we get for that Page of Wands. It comes with a message of love or apology. Like, hey. And judgment, forgiveness, second chances, redemption, reunion, reconciliation. 
And there we return to the justice, the love, the harmony, the balance you felt when you first met. We're kind of coming full circle here. That's what I'm feeling about the world. Is it does come full circle. There's a little pause in the middle here. You've got, you've got to make your, your desires known. This two of wands is your desires, what you want. Instead of accepting, hey, hey, Leo, 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 Leo. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> right? So what you can't see is you're going to get this message coming in. And yeah, that little pause is the pause for this person to go, oh, I cannot lose my queen of pentacles. Can't lose them. And that message comes in and brings a lot of repair and healing, which is also part of this full moon, since it is going to be conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer. So let's see our king of pentacles. Yes. It is conjunct Chiron. This is the star, which is also about healing. And then we have our forward progress. Uh, we have the chariot and the six of swords. So your king of pentacles shows up and it's the dream come true, the wish being granted, the forward motion, the progress you were seeking, and moving to calmer waters. Okay, so... We have, we have something really powerful happening here for those of you who are able to step out of your comfort zone a little bit, hold the vision of what it was you believed this, where you believed this could potentially head, and then somewhere along the way it got derailed. But that Ten of Wands is everything, because you cannot keep, keep going as things are. It's just too much. It isn't serving you anymore. And this full moon is the release of all of that. Prepare to make a change. And yeah, I mean, for some of us, when we make those changes, things are going to fall away. It happens, right? Um, but for many of you, the changes will be very positive. Temporary standstill, a little bit of a pause, but then on the flip side, exactly what it was that you determined you wanted and there you are off to the races okay with a lot of this this is, little page of wands opens up so much more opportunity on the other side so that's what I have for you I know this went a little longer than usual um, I am going to take it to the extended the link for that is below um, if you have the All Access Pass membership, you already have the, the extended, but for the rest of you, Leo, um, it goes all around the Zodiac based on this reading, so it will make it more personal for Aries through Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, okay? So that's what I'm going to do in the extended, but um, let me give you the uh, Zodiac signs here. The Tower is Mars, which rules Aries. We have the Hermit which is Virgo. Hey, Leo, why don't you come over here? Say hello. Instead of looking like you're going to knock over everything I worked so hard to put together, come say hi. Right here. Say hi. Mm -hmm. Say hi. We have um, the Emperor, which is Aries. King of Pentacles is Taurus. Justice is Libra. Lovers is Gemini. I understand fully, Leo. The Magician is Mercury, which rules Virgo and Gemini. The Queen of Pentacles, some Capricorn. The Temperance card is Sagittarius. The world is Saturn, Aquarius, and Capricorn. Hanged man is Neptune, which rules Pisces. Taurus in the Hierophant. 
Page of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Page of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Judgment card is Pluto, which rules Scorpio. This Justice card is out twice, that's Libra. King of Pentacles out twice, that's um, Taurus. The Star is Aquarian energy. Chariot is Cancerian energy. Thanks for your patience, guys, on my new surroundings here. Hopefully I'll figure it out better uh, when I kick off the new series of readings coming up. And um, I'm headed to the extended. I'll see you there in a second. Bye for now.